Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system attacks the body's own joints. It is estimated that 1.5 million adults in the United States, or 0.6% of the adult population, have rheumatoid arthritis. The disease is most commonly found in older populations. Rheumatoid arthritis is characterized by warmth and painful swelling of the joints, most commonly the small joints in the hand, including the fingers, the feet, and the joints of the cervical spine. Larger joints, such as the shoulders and knees, may also experience some swelling and pain. With the swelling can often come joint stiffness, most often reported in the early morning. Outside of the joints, some people have experienced complications from anemia, neck pain, and dry eyes and mouth. Even more rarely, there may be inflammation of blood vessels or the lining of the lungs or the sacs surrounding the heart. In the typical joint, the fluid-containing area between the effacing bones is bounded by a thin layer of tissue called the synovium. It is this thin layer that the immune system attacks in individuals with rheumatoid arthritis. The normally thin synovium becomes inflamed and encroaches upon neighboring cartilage and bone, eroding them over time and leading to permanent joint impairment. Developing medical treatment initially began by finding and targeting the major causes of the inflammation response. Eventually, two major culprits were discovered, tumor necrosis factor alpha and the interleukin-1 receptors. Both receptors belong to the cytokine family. Depicted here by the blue transmembrane protein in the top right corner of the screen, inflammatory cytokines, including tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 receptors, serve a number of roles in the life of a cell from differentiation and proliferation to programmed cell death. In the case of rheumatoid arthritis, their importance comes in the form of the inflammatory response they produce. As a result of their identified function, both receptors became targets for numerous biologic agents that inhibit their expression. This targeting strategy was generally successful and became the standard for rheumatoid arthritis treatment. However, at least 60% of affected individuals see some persistence of symptoms while on these drugs, and some may exhibit no improvement at all. This indicated the need for further investigation into the disease's root causes to fill this gap. Because directly targeting the major factors and receptors individually led to some lack of coverage, research retargeted towards the process through which the signals are passed on. This brought the JAK-STAT signaling pathway into focus. JAK, which stands for the Janus kinase family of tyrosine kinases, derives its name from its function, wherein the protein phosphorylates tyrosine residues on nearby protein strands. JAK proteins bind to a cytokine receptor complex, such as the interleukin-1 receptor, at which point they are activated. These activated JAK kinases can phosphorylate STAT proteins. The phosphorylated STAT proteins dimerize and attach to promoter regions of DNA within the nucleus. These promoter regions then activate the transcription of genes that promote inflammation in adjacent joints. This sequence of actions is common across several types of cytokine receptors, making the pathway an attractive target for therapeutics. Progress in this area of research allowed for the development of CP69550, a JAK inhibitor known commercially as tofacitinib and released in 2012. Tofacitinib is specifically designed to inhibit the action of JAK3 and prevent the proliferation of the inflammation signal before it starts. This was believed to be effective because the first step in the signaling process is a conjugation of JAK3 and JAK1. Thus, inhibiting JAK3 prevents any conjugation and thus any transmission of the signal. However, recent in vivo experiments have indicated that JAK1 and JAK2 are more significant than initially believed. Those inhibitors that also targeted JAK1 and 2 were more effective at minimizing the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. Further examination of tofacitinib has also found that it inhibits the activity of JAK1 and JAK2, but to a lesser extent, explaining its initial success. The emerging discovery of the importance of the entirety of the JAK kinases in prompting an inflammatory response offers an exciting new direction for therapeutic research of rheumatoid arthritis. Preventing the signaling process before it is amplified 
allows for fewer targets and a potentially broader application. It is clear that whatever research takes place, a new standard for rheumatoid arthritis is highly desirable.